In today's educational video from the book, The New Male Sexuality, we're going to be talking about penises and what is normal. And it's true that men usually have a great deal of ease or discontent with their organs. They fear that they may not be up to snuff in terms of size, power, and predictability. This does not feel right or good. They fear that sooner or later they're going to disappoint and embarrass the man. However, penises have minds of their own. They come in all shapes and sizes. They go up and down during a sex session. And larger is not necessarily better. This idea that women want it large is just based on what men have seen in porn. Sure, there are some women that like them large. However, there are also many women that like them small. And the data shows that most women like them of just average size, which is good because that is exactly what men have. Men almost invariably assume that a bigger penis is better and is what women prefer. Women think much less about penis size than do men. The vast majority of women I've talked to could not recall a conversation about sex with women friends where penis size was even mentioned. I've also talked to a number of men with very large penises. They are not happy with this. They complain about women gasping in horror when they first lay eye on their outsized organs. Some women have refused to have intercourse with them at all and many have refused to do oral on them, fearing they would choke. And some of these men said they often have to be careful when having sex, lest they do hurt their partners. So this fantasy is not at all it's cracked up to be, and I can attest to that myself. He um, goes into a lot more detail about penises in this chapter. And that the penis changes as it ages, the life cycle of the penis. Then we go into the next chapter, am I normal or what? People always want to know if they're normal. And that everyone's concerned, everyone's concerned about whether they're normal. Like we all have performance anxiety, men and women. It's just common. Welcome to the human race. Now here, in this book, What Really Happens in Bed, Stephen Carter and Julia Sokol interviewed 125 men of all ages. They concluded that all men have sexual anxieties. Quote, young men are anxious that their inexperience will show. They are also typically anxious about premature ejaculation and whether they know enough about female anatomy. Middle-aged men are worried that their erections are not as firm or quickly achieved as they were when they were in their late teens and early 20s. Older men worry that erections are less frequent, less firm, and more temperamental. Now, here are, here are going to be some statistics on the number of men who have considered these things that bother them. In a study by Ilana Spector and Michael Carey, they found 7% of men have chronic erection problems. 37% suffer from chronic rapid ejaculations. 5% have difficulty ejaculating with their partners. 16% complain about a low sex drive. And this doesn't even count the number of people who have different drives from their partners. Now, in Sure Heights large sample of men, 65% answered yes when asked if they had ever had difficulty having an erection. 70% said they had ejaculate more quickly than they had wanted on at least one occasion. So the point is clear. Sex problems are normal and typical. Now, they also found that the same proportion of women as men have chronic or sporadic problems with sex. 
These include difficulties getting aroused. Yes, I think that's a big problem for women. That's a big problem that I sometimes have, like difficulty getting aroused. Um, difficulty having orgasm, painful intercourse, low desire. So for both men and women, it seems sex problems are not unusual. Now, another area where people struggle is masturbation because um, it has been downplayed and vilified in human history and in our culture, especially there's nothing abnormal about it. It seems selfish and a lot of people hide it from their partner, but it's a normal and healthy activity that people can do by themselves. The only time in which masturbation is bad is if you're using it as a substitute for having sex with your partner. So if you never want sex with your partner and you'd rather masturbate, then it's a problem. Um, but it usually means that you're unhappy in the relationship. Something is off with the relationship or the partner or about himself. Because most of us still feel somewhat uneasy about masturbation, we try to hide it from our partner. When a man is walked in on by his partner while masturbating, instead of simply acknowledging what he is doing, he often denies it. Nothing, just dozing. <laughs> or, I had an itch, I was just scratching it. Yeah, sure. How much better and easier if he could just say what he was doing. It's possible the woman may not feel good about what he's doing, just as he feared. She may feel that her attractiveness or skillfulness is inadequate if he masturbates even though she's available. Such feelings need to be talked about. They stem from a culture's narrow view of sex. Then he talks about fantasies, how people can fantasize, how having a fantasy does not mean you want to do the thing, that people often fantasize while they're with their partner, especially when they've been in a longer relationship, how that's totally fine, how you can include your partner in your fantasy. And that if you are having a fantasy while you're with your partner, if you get too lost in your fantasy and forget about your partner, your partner may notice and feel turned off. And I can attest to this myself. But let me read first from the book. Fantasizing can sometimes be bothersome in a relationship. For example, let's say that during having sex with your partner, you trip out on a fantasy, and he's speaking to men now. And although this increases your arousal and you're having a great time, your partner feels alone and neglected because she can feel that you're not present with her. And that's a thing that I really need. I think women really need to be able to be turned on that we feel that you're there. And she'll know that she doesn't know you're fantasizing. She knows only that although you're having sex with her, you don't seem present. This is a, this is a big one. She may not voice her complaint as I have. So she may not know that you're not being present, but you're in your head somewhere else. That's the whole point. You're not with her. Whether you're fantasizing about sex or you're thinking about work really doesn't matter. You're not with her, right? Instead, she may say that she has trouble getting aroused or maintaining the excitement or has problems having orgasm. It may only be with further exploration that she can come up with the feelings I've suggested. Ladies, if you're having trouble getting turned on, check in with your man and that he's really present, that he's tuned into you, that he's present with you, that he's in embodied. Because if he's somewhere else mentally or he's just trying to perform or he's anxious, it can that could be the reason that you're not getting turned on and you don't even know why. So that's why I'm making a big point about this part of the book. It doesn't just have to do with fantasies. Any time that the man is not present. So one thing you can do is include your partner in your fantasy. Um, uh, you can fantasize about someone else, but include your partner in the fantasy so that they're with you. They can often pick up on that. that they won't feel like you're really gone. 
Although it seems far more common for women to feel lonely and left out in sex, it happens for some men too. The reason appears to be the same. The partner gets more involved with her fantasy than she is with you. Regardless of who feels left out, something needs to be done. It helps considerably if the one doing the fantasizing can admit it. There is no need for apologies or feeling bad, just a need to see what's going on and what could help. Another kind of problem that can arise in a relationship is when the woman gets upset about a man's fantasies or erotic materials. Does his use of them indicate he no longer finds her attractive or desirable? In such situations, a good discussion about her concerns and his feelings is required. Thanks for watching my video.